a recently emerged discipline among all the veterinary departments that you have come across and you will you are going to uh, you will be exposed to them in due course of time okay it's all these developments that we find in veterinary public health they are of a recent origin okay so in the first class we will discuss about the aims and scope of veterinary public health okay what is veterinary public health how it is different from other health sciences and in what way this particular uh, uh, course is going to help the profession are, uh, recent profession okay okay so these are the things so, so now it is uh, it will be on in the first class uh, we will uh, discuss let, about the aims and scope of wait, veterinary same public same voices audible okay. what is veterinary public health how it is different from other health sciences and in what way this particular of course is going to help okay now let us come to the slides okay so aims and scope of veterinary public health the scope of veterinary public health is very wide okay so because it integrates the many disciplines of uh, science and it caters the requirements of the society in that perspective the scope is very wide and when we talk about the evolution of the man man and the mankind human being did not evolve as a an, an isolated entity in the nature human being evolved along with other species the other animals other plants and all those creatures in the nature and human being evolved as today's what we are finding a modern human okay this evolution if at all i would like to attribute i would attribute it as a coevolution coevolution in the sense that evolution along with other species on the planet earth so also the relationship when when a human being has evolved himself okay so himself i mean mankind man okay uh, in 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 association with other species the diseases also the disease agents because the, the the condition caused by an agent you call it as a disease okay they are also shared between humans and animals the magnitude of sharing is more than 60% these infectious agents they are shared between multiple species in the in the universe in the, in the in the nature okay and we have different categories of people to tackle we call them as specializations today we have the physicians who take care of the humans we have veterinarians who take care of the animal health and we have the the plant uh, experts who take care of the crops plants botanists whatever it is okay we have plants we have uh, humans we have animals and all these uh, living components have interaction with the non living components okay we call them as ecosystems okay earth itself when you see earth there is simply if you divide it is made up of certain living things certain non living things and the, these living things there is a stratification in them and there are non living things the living things derive the nutrition and other things from the non living things they interact in the environment ultimately what we call it as a stable or balanced or climaxed ecosystem that we find it and human is one species on the planet earth and when we talk about the interrelationship between these plants animals and the humans they are all related and environment of course has a, a tremendous influence on the health and well being of these creatures on the earth okay with that perspective if you see okay with that perspective if you see the veterinary public health has many things to understand so that the human well being is achieved better lives are achieved better food is provided to the human being 
and we can minimize the diseases as much as possible using the common principles of disease management this is all about veterinary public health that encompass okay so let me take to little history and then uh, i am going to define certain terms okay 18th century okay the medical authorities in the uk and the continental europe they started the strategies okay that today led to the elimination of the rental pest okay this is a history that you have studied in the first year that you studied in the second year and because of this rinder pest only way back in uh, 1760s a first veterinary school was opened in law in france that you know it and the veterinary profession has successfully eradicated the rinder pest and there is a milestone to celebrate this victory okay rinder pest being one of the dreaded disease of the animals even though it won't infect the humans there is a lot of food scarcity you know that in india we have certain taboos with the consumption of the cattle and cows but if you see the world the world as a whole beef is a major food animal okay beef the pork then comes the small ruminants and uh, the birds such as poultry these are all the the nutritional security the food security that comes through these animals and when uh, these animals that offer the food to the human being they suffer from the disease and they die the the, the loss is twofold one fold loss is that the person who rears these animals for the profit or the livelihood lost a precious uh, possession that they had and second thing is that because the animals died the food supply has stopped okay in that perspective you see Uh, when we we stop the disease in the animals we are promoting the human well being so that's the link between the animal science and the public health okay however as this is the story of the 17th century when the first veterinary college was opened 17th and early 18th century then uh, 19th and 20th century what happened you know there was a continued interest in the in the in the linking of the veterinary and human medicine because many of the things are similar between animals and humans okay the sciences are different we have demarcated or differentiated remember what i told in the initial uh, slide okay initially what i talked is the human being is coevolved with other species when human being is coevolved with other species the problems are alike take for example in dog rabies kills means in humans also it kills so also in other fox skunk raccoon and other wild animals it kills if it affects the nervous system in the human being it so also it affects in the animals the nervous system if there is a vaccine for the management of the rabies in the animals there is of course a vaccine in the humans also okay the pathogenesis is same the management of a disease is similar if not exactly did to same okay so we should learn from each other we should learn from each other this is what is breaking the boundaries between the physicians and veterinarians and one such a effort that occurred in the 19th 19th century okay so see this image this is the legendary rudolf virchow virchow or virchow whatever you call it as okay Rudolf Virchow is a person who coined the term zoonosis for the first time, and he is the man. He the he has he has been he has been he is a, a physician and he is a philosopher also. And you see his statement, okay, between animal and human medicine, there is no dividing line, okay. As such, when we talk about the evolutionary evolution or evolutionary relationships, there is no. dividing line between the animal medicine and the human medicine okay uh, just let me take you back okay previously when when the medical science or the veterinary science was in infancy the same physician who used to treat the animals also used to treat the humans and the physicians who used to treat the human patients also used to treat the animals there was no dividing line when in the initial stage okay off late only this dividing line has come 
that is why rudolf virchow you see his his time 1821 to 1902 he lived okay in his time only he promoted and he told very clearly to the physicians and veterinarians and likewise other people that second line you read it nor should there be there is no as such there is no dividing line and you don't try to create the obstacle you don't try to draw the line between these the healing arts okay ultimately uh, we have to promote the health of the humans and animals have to live very uh, with all uh, measures that we take for animal welfare and there should not be suffering in any of these species that's what is the message take home message from this rudolf virchow's uh, statement is it clear there should not be any dividing line there is no as such dividing line and we should not create the dividing line by virtue of our personal interest or wasted interest or professional interest in that uh, perspective the you see the 18th and 19th century many of the discoveries and inventions that happened they complemented each other the physical uh, the physicians other medical science and the veterinary science and likewise other sciences but in the mid of the 20th century this collaboration declined why there is a collaboration that declined this i can uh, exactly extrapolate it to the type of the families that we get in the society earlier there were all uh, joint families so upon time nuclear families increased just like that initially there was all one ocean like thing that used to be the disciplines and professions as it is advanced so what started you know the fragmentation started because of the evolution of what we call it as the super specializations specializations super specializations and more degrees in the in the specialized uh, professions that started that has hindered to certain extent the collaborative efforts between the physicians and between the veterinarians and between the other uh, sectors of uh, the society okay however uh, that should not have been okay it should not have happened okay with that perspective if you see again in the year 1951 fao thought all these things food and agriculture organization that deals with it is a united nations organization that deals with the food safety and security across the globe the aim of this particular organization is to provide safe food for humans across the globe okay that's what is okay uh, the food and agriculture organization of the united nations okay in the year 1951 it thought seriously okay that's what is the inception what would say because all these departments of veterinary public health have come after 1960s as i told in the beginning among all these veterinary departments veterinary public health is one of the young departments okay and it tried to define because until you define something how the people will understand what is that so for that purpose it defined veterinary public health okay when something is defined then only the application of that is very simple people will easily take that that's all the veterinary public health if i can read the definition of fao given way back in 1951 veterinary public health comprises of all community efforts i have highlighted the community okay it is not individual centric it is not a particular case centric okay it is the population centric okay the 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 uh, strength behind this definition is that it is the population based it is the community based not individual but ultimately how a community or a population is made up of individuals okay but it makes the observation on the bunch of individuals or a cluster of individuals or group of individuals that you call it as a community okay a family to a, a village to a city to a country and to what we call it as a global village what we call it as okay the community can be extrapolated to any level it can be as small as a family nuclear family to as big as the world universe that's what is a community the the uh, tenacity of this particular definition is okay 
Pub veterinary public health comprises of all community efforts influencing or influenced by you just see influencing means which is already going on influenced by okay indirectly one is direct other is indirect okay veterinary medical arts and sciences wherever veterinary medical art okay or the science is applied for what for this purpose what is that purpose prevention of diseases protection of life and promotion of well being okay these components ultimately where you are applying the veterinary medical arts or the science you are applying for the prevention of diseases protection of life promotion of well being and see one more efficiency not mere the disease the human value human efficiency if it is promoted that is also and any place where the veterinary medical arts or the science contribute for that or influence that one uh, that all those activities all those activities all those efforts okay we call this as veterinary public health activities clear veterinary public health comprises of all community efforts influencing or influenced by the veterinary medical arts and sciences applied to the prevention of diseases protection of life and promotion of well being and efficiency of man this is what is veterinary public health is this is the definition given by food and agriculture organization of united nations way back in the year 1951 okay and this definition has gone as experts understood more expanded scope more expanded activities of the veterinary public health obviously the definition got widened okay this is due to the advent of or due to the increase in the more understanding more knowledge uh, more coordination more co uh, cooperation uh, uh, i can simply say that as the time demands okay accordingly the accordingly the the scope of veterinary public health also changed okay 1951 the first definition and in the year 1975 earlier there was one global agency fao now one more global agency united nations agency that joined hand together world health organization world health organization is a body or a agency that takes care of <clears throat> the health of the globe okay human health of the globe okay that organization joined hands with fao and in their joint technical report they modified the previous definition that was given by only fao okay and the new amended or new modified definition that was given in the year 1975 and this definition reads like this veterinary public health is a component of public health activities okay earlier you see community was the term given now you see component of public health activities means when we talk about the public health it is the population health community health okay that's what is the uh, area of the activities of this veterinary public health okay component of public health activities now you see devoted to the application of professional veterinary skills knowledge and resources all three are very important and in, in your extension course you will study in detail about what is a skill what is a knowledge what are the resources in detail you will study application of all these professional skills knowledge and resources for the protection and improvement of human health okay this is what they defined it as veterinary public health okay among all veterinary courses or the departments that you study veterinary public health is having more clear definition of what it has to do what it has to encompass and what it need to do because it is a young department of the veterinary science okay otherwise veterinary is all uh, towards the uh, patient management or a case management but here we are talking about the community and we are linking the veterinary 
activities for the promotion of the human health and that intersection what we get these activities are shared activities between the public health and the veterinary science the veterinary public health is at the intersection of these two these two okay so let me read the definition again 1975 definition given jointly by fa and who veterinary public health is a component of public health activities devoted to the application of professional veterinary skills knowledge and resources for the protection and improvement of human health okay you please remember this definition and friends each word in this definition is very important okay let us go next see this image he is a legendary public health veterinarian from usa and he spent part of his life in india in ivri he stayed for some time and he did work on some genetic diseases such as hydatidosis and all and this is a man who has written a book okay veterinary medicine and human health which is a very famous veterinary book okay that published in the year 1984 and as a veterinarian before you retire i i appeal to each one of you to read this book because without reading this book your veterinary science course is incomplete okay you will not be knowing who are you you will not be knowing why you uh, maybe by compulsion or some uh, obligation you must have taken veterinary science course but you will be, you will be you will be retiring or you will be dying without knowing the the importance of this particular science and if at all you want to understand you want to be happy and you want to congratulate yourself as a veterinarian so you should read this book okay so this book is let me repeat again veterinary medicine and human health okay 1984 book this book will be available in in old uh, libraries new libraries may not be having that because this book is out of print okay so all those older libraries any college veterinary college in library this book will be available okay so this book deals with one medicine okay this book deals with one medicine the one term one means one you cannot divide one two you can divide three you can divide ten you can divide but one you cannot divide okay if you divide one that will become fraction understood so one medicine means you see medicine in a holistic way as one entity and when you see the medic medicine as one entity you should not have you should not have uh, the fragmentation attitude to divide it as the human medicine veterinary medicine or some other uh, fish medicine something like that is it clear so that's what is today this one medicine concept has transformed itself into one health okay for one world one health is required again i am going to emphasize about this in subsequent classes okay so let us read what dr kelvin w shabe a great veterinarian okay he was uh, he was uh, the professor in edinburgh university and he has served at many places many many university you can go through uh, you can google out about his biography okay if i want to read one of the statements of kelvin w shabe the critical needs of man the critical needs of man include combating of diseases if at all i want to be healthy i should not suffer from diseases which is one of the requirement i should not suffer from diseases is one of the requirement of humans second ensuring enough food i can be only alive when i consume good food good food here means after consuming that food i should not suffer from disease that's what is good food is again safe food good food quality food all those things we'll discuss subsequently and adequate environmental quality if i every day inhale polluted contaminated toxicated intoxicated air how can i be healthy this is what happens in uh, big cities where there is lot of pollution okay and a society in which human values prevail 
i am living in a society where the humans are more like the primitive animals okay i am throwing all my waste into waste whatever that is generated into the neighbors yard or i am injuring hurting damaging the property and the lives of the neighbor how can i live happily in a society how a how a society can be a, 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 a more valued society can be uh, imagined okay in that perspective if you see the, the roots of the when one medicine they are they are what we uh, uh, the the one health roots are in one medicine and what we give, want today is for the one world one health okay with that perspective this swabes statement is very pertinent here okay and that is more compelling here today because such things are required today in the society okay because human being you cannot think in isolation human being you have to always think that it, uh, it is a, this creature that lives in the nature along with other species okay the critical needs of man include combating of diseases ensuring of enough food adequate environmental quality and a society in which human values prevail this is what we expect in that perspective if you see so one health is very much required these days and this concept of one health and one world okay or in other words for one world one health some people say like that okay so the framework was way back in the uh, year 2008 okay when when uh, see this global agencies the fao oi who world bank unicef okay and other the strategic partnerships okay all of them they joined together the hands and they 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 promulgated they promoted one particular thing which is very much pertinent to the to the for the maintenance of the global health that is one health and the, and and uh, there was a publication okay 14th october 2008 okay contributing to one health one world one health a strategic framework for reducing risk of infectious diseases at the human animal uh, ecosystem interface okay you know what is interface again i am going to deal with interface in detail little later but at this point of time you just understand that <coughs> wherever these uh, uh, you cannot imagine the world without humans animals and ecosystems and they interact with each other at interaction points we call it as interface okay this interface so there is a strategic framework if at all we want to reduce the risk of transmission of these diseases from one species to the other species or one sector to the other sector we should work under one health this is what is the concept that was that was promoted okay and this particular partnership one health that deals with cooperation and collaboration okay cooperation and collaboration are forms of partnership one person cannot do this one profession cannot do this one person cannot one profession cannot one sector cannot if all of us join hands together then we can achieve this one health that is what is the first documentary thing that was taken at the global level later there was a publication by oi one world one health okay so that was a, a subsequent publication in the year 2009 uh, i think so likewise several publications that came and today one health is every everybody is aware of that one okay we talk about one health initiative the initially it was a concept and concept turned into a initiative and today we are all part of one health activities okay so we join together the hands and we we aim at the minimization of the diseases because this is pre is very difficult task okay we aim at our ultimate aim is that but we may not achieve at times except in interface the smallpox and now we are into the polio and all uh, it is very difficult thing but we always look for minimization of the diseases the burden of the disease on the on the globe or the planet earth should reduce with that perspective 
Let me again read a statement by Bernard Wallet, the Director General of Hawaii, way back in 6th May 2009. The new concept, One World, One Health, has recently appeared. Okay. Earlier, there was a practice before 16th, uh, I mean, uh, before uh, 18th century, I can say. Okay. 19th century also, it was there. Okay. Up to that, it was there. But later on, as the specializations that emerged, there was a weak coordination. Okay. So that's why now, now the, the, at the global level, the thinkers, they want that. Again, this concept has to be, uh, whatever, whatever that was a practice, it should be put into, again, repractice. That is why the new concept, new concept in the sense, the activities are not new. But we want to tie the people together with a new concept, new way of joining together. That's why it is a new concept. One world, one health has recently appeared, indicating that the world has see, world has suddenly woken up to the link, uh, woken up to the link between animal diseases and public health. Public health here is human health. Okay, so. The, 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 the director general's message is that the human health, then public health, the animal health, they are all linked together. And we have to practice today the one health so that we can save the world. That's what is the, uh, the gist or extract of this statement is. Okay. So with this, uh, let us uh, define what is health. Okay. The definition of the health has been given very long back by the World Health Organization. Okay. The health is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the options of disease or infirmity. This is the good old definition of the health by the World Health Organization. And let me explain what is the health is, because without defining health, veterinary public health, understanding this is it is not possible. Okay, because veterinary public health itself includes the definition of health. That's why. It is a state of complete physical, mental, and social uh, well-being. Say, for example, complete physical in the sense individuals should have all organs. There should be good coordination between the organs, should have hands, should have legs, should have the liver, kidney, all those things. This is what is physical requirement. Okay, assembly of the organism. Okay, physical. Second is mental. Mental in the sense, whenever I feel I should lift my hand, whenever I feel I should interact with the environment, I should feel the, 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 the cold in the environment, the heat in the environment, the, the, the signals or cues in the environment, I should feel them. That's what is mental. And I should, I should, I should, be, I should be interacting with the environment, okay, where micro or macro environment, that's what is mental health is. And the third dimension you see, the social well-being. Social well-being, okay, I am very fine. I can eat, drink, live, reproduce, everything is okay. But I do not know how to behave in the society. Such individual is also said to be sick or not. He is not known to be in health. There is a, there is a person, say, for example, this man is very extraordinary in studies, but he won't talk to anybody. He is said to suffer from a, a state of ill health. Won't talk to anybody. Won't wish to see anybody. Won't uh, uh, relish to be in, 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 uh, in, in a group or a mob or in a society. Such an individual is said to, even though the individual is having the physical and the mental health, is not having the social health. Okay. The mental health in the sense, I, I'm having all my psychosomatic things, they, should, they are working properly. That's what is the mental health is, okay? Mental health does not mean only the madness. Madness is the last stage, okay? Before that, there are so many psychosomatic disorders. These psychosomatic disorders, they deal with the thinking related things or psychological things or with the mental well-being. Physical in the sense, there is no hepatitis in my liver. There is no nephritis in my kidney. There is no encephalitis in my brain. That's what is physical health is. Okay. Health. 
is a state of complete okay all these things should not be there okay what the ailments or the diseases or the disorders abnormalities should not be there okay so health is a state of complete physical okay fit and fine mental rational thinking okay and social well being in a in a society societal living okay and not merely the options of disease or infirmity okay simply you cannot say that some individual is having some disease okay that individual is unhealthy you cannot say like that okay in addition to that there are ment mental and social dimensions that are associated with the health then then makes this is what is the holistic health is in nutshell in this is what is the whole health is health as a whole is okay physical mental and social well being this is a recent definition of veterinary public health given by again you see now earlier fao gave the definition then in the year 1975 fao joined with who gave the definition and you see in the year 1999 one more agency the agency that deals with the health of animals on the earth oie oie stands for world organization for animal health okay that joined hands together all these are sister concerns of united nations okay today we call this as a tripartite partnership okay today we talk about the global partnership strategic alliance and all when we talk about in that perspective they are very pertinent the who the oie the the fao join together the experts of these three united nations organizations gave a new definition of veterinary public health in the year 1999 and the definition reads like this <clears throat> the contributions to the physical mental and social well being of humans through an understanding and application of veterinary science see this is very clear so what does it mean the first half of the definition deals with the definition of the health okay which has been defined by who a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely the options of disease or infirmity is the health and you see this contributions to this health what is that physical mental and social well being of humans through what through understanding and application of veterinary science is veterinary public health okay all those contributions to the human well being human health okay through the contributions from the animal science or the veterinary science okay that you call it as veterinary public health this is the very recent definitions that has been adopted by the three tripartites okay the fao the who and the oie okay this is what the veterinary public health means and this is what the veterinary public health is i think uh, let us stop here i have defined what is veterinary public health i defined uh, health and i introduced you what is one health is one medicine how it is transformed to a one health today these things i emphasize today in the next class i am going to talk about more about the one health and i am going to talk about the the domains core domains of uh, veterinary public health and i am going to talk about the activities of veterinary public health in the today's context or the today's world how veterinary public health is uh, pertinent or is very important that we are going to discuss in the next class okay thank you now the topic is uh, open for discussion